Hello, everyone, and welcome in. Yes, this is the Propaganda Channel, and we are, as you can see, turning the page on our projects here. We are going to be working on the mobile suit MSM-07, the Zegok or Zagok. This is, yes, a Gundam figure. We're going to have some fun here. Before I get too far along here, I need to give uh, kind of some background, a little bit of context to this project. First thing I want to do is I want to give a very big shout out and a thank you to Show Me What You Bought. Now, this is a web store. I'll put the link for that in the description below. They provided the Gundam model for this project. The second thing is, is that I'm, this is a buddy project. I'm working on this model with another modeler. This is Cobra Pla. He's a modeler out of the Seattle area. I'll give you his name a little bit later on. I haven't asked him for his permission yet. But you'll see snippets of his work throughout. And then as we build our models separately, we'll come together towards the end and I'll be able to pull everything together into our kind of our side-by-sides of how we put these models together, him being a Gundam builder, me being, I guess, an armor builder, see how our different styles kind of work together or worked separately to produce our figures. Should be a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy this process. Okay, so let's, uh, let me get started with this project. Now, I have built a Gundam a couple, maybe three years ago, something like that. So I do have some familiarity with the Bandai kits and how they go together. So I knew that they're basically a friction fit type of a assembly, so no glue necessary, and for the most part. And they have all these different movable elements, so it's a poseable figure. And so let's talk about this buddy build for just a second here. So the basic idea here is that Cobra Pla, now his background and his what he likes to work on are the Gundam figures. He's got a lot of experience doing those. I, of course, come from a more of an armor modeling background, more traditional modeling background, if you will. The idea here is to see what two different modelers coming from two different sort of uh, genre styles or skill sets, how we would each approach uh, a Gundam figure, the same Gundam figure. So we were both doing a Z-Gok here. So Cobra Pla will be applying his expertise of doing Gundams. I'll be applying my skill sets of working with modeling in general and armor modeling in particular. And at the end of this, we'll bring our models together, as I mentioned, and we'll show them off and see what the end results are going to be. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. While I've been chatting away about the buddy build, you can see that the construction has been going along in the background here. The video shows that. No issues here with the construction. The Bandai kits, as promised, just really, they literally snap together. The instructions are clear. There's line drawings, and even though the text is in, in Japanese, uh, the like I said, the drawings, the illustrations are perfectly clear. Very easy construction. No issues at all in this stage of the game. So let's talk about how this buddy build is actually kind of working out, the mechanics behind it. So Cobra Pla and myself, we do not live in the same city, so we do everything a little bit long distance here. So over the course of a week, we will do, a, say, a Skype call, a video conference call, maybe three, sometimes five times a week. And then throughout the week, we'll do instant messages back and forth. We'll send photographs back and forth, keeping track on each other, watching each other's progress, asking questions of each other. I certainly have been asking quite a few questions of him and how we get around certain technical issues that I might be having, having with the build or questions along the line. And I guess that's been partly my biggest challenge and my biggest apprehension is that I'm working in the Gundam world and I feel like I should be trying to do things the Gundam way, but that's really not the point of this project. And Cobra Pla has been great about this. He's been offering suggestions and tips on you know, how they work around certain issues here and there or quest answering questions that I might have. But in the end, you know, Cobra Pla says, Rick, do it your own way. And over time, I've relaxed and so, this project is certainly going to end up being much more of a Rick build than a Gundam, a Rick building a Gundam than Gundam building a Rick build, if that makes sense at all. Now, this is a perfect example of the time where the Gundam world starts creeping into me because I'm watching videos, I'm watching Cobra Pla, and they're doing scribing and adding panel lines and things like that. Well, I don't have any of those tools at all. I almost went out and bought a set, but I didn't. But what I did is just some little bit of old-fashioned, just a small bit, old-fashioned detail adding, a little bit of scratch building. Some strip styrene here. These happen to be these rocket tanks that are on the back of the z -Gok here. Just adding some strips of plastic just to kind of dress them up a little bit. I don't know. I can't help myself. Just have to add something. Have to make it a little bit harder, a little bit more fancy, I guess. And then in other areas, again, I don't have these scribing tools, but I do have some drill bits and I had, do have some punch and dies. So I made a few extra rivets or holes here, just little bolt heads or whatever, just kind of drill down, countersink these little punch and die discs and just drop those into place here. 
quite frankly, uh, in the end, I don't know if any of these little details will actually make much of a much of a difference in the final presentation. They're fairly nuanced. They're fairly small. But it was a lot of fun to do, even though in the back of my head, I'm thinking like, oh, I don't think a Gundam guy would have done that. <laughs> but again, that's not the point. A special thank you to all my amazing Patreon members for your incredible support. Your contributions help me continue to create content for this channel. If you're not already a member, I invite you to join our Patreon community. As a member, you'll gain access to exclusive behind-the-scenes content, early releases, and more. I hope you'll consider joining Patreon and supporting this channel. Thank you very much. When I began this project, there was really no doubt in my mind that I would be repainting the model into some sort of a different scheme, some sort of a camo pattern. And so now that I'm at that point, I've been talking with Cobra Pla, and he highly recommends that I pull everything apart, something we don't do in armor modeling, and paint everything in, as separate, um, separate pieces here. He says it's much easier to do and then reassemble everything. So I've done that. I've pulled everything apart. I've given everything a primer layer of Mr. Surfacer 1200. And because, you know, these Gundams, the Z-Gok is kind of a dynamic figure, I thought, well, we'll go ahead and do some pre-shading here. Just put some heavy, heavy lines in there just to kind of accentuate some of the shading and some of the paint work that we'll be doing later on. So I was really stuck with the base colors or the, with the paint scheme on this. I, the Z-Gok itself, the mobile suit, it's equally adept on land, underwater, in the water. So it's kind of an amphibian type of a suit here. So I started looking at references like fish, fish camouflages, ships, submarines, torpedoes, all sorts of different things like that. In the end, I ended up basically looking at aircraft and kind of doing an aircraft theme married with, coupled with maybe a aquatic submarine type camouflage. Basically light grays, light blues here. So you'll see that as it starts to develop here. It's, it really doesn't follow any of the references that I was looking at. However, in the meantime, I've got a few photographs here from Cobra Pla as he's working on his. Now you can see that he's chosen a totally different paint scheme and his painting process has nothing to do with fingers in the paint. He puts everything on nice sticks masks everything up nicely. This is what professional and true modeling looks like. Like I said, that's what real modelers look like and <laughs> I am totally something different here. So as I finished the construction and the assembly of this in my haste to clean up my area, I took the boxes and everything and I threw them away. And it wasn't until a couple of days later that I realized that I needed those louvers. So I recreated those. I scratch built a couple of louvers, or the louvers, and I was ready to assemble those. And I thought, what about this mesh? Maybe I could use that, add that in there instead. Might give it a nice look. And I really did like this idea. So I know it might be kind of sacrilege here, kind of taking the Zagok and turn it into some sort of a Franken Zagok. But um, I like this idea, make it a little bit more individualized here. So we're going to use some of this mesh, just cut out some parts here, and see if we can make this look okay. I actually kind of like this. <laughs> so he kind of looks bug-eyed right now. And I know that's just his body. That's his chest, not his head. But that looks pretty cool. So, okay, good enough. Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> Let's turn the page to the camouflage pattern. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I had looked for sort of inspiration and references in all sorts of different places from, you know, fish and airplanes and birds and whatever the case may be. And in the end, <laughs> I really didn't follow anything that I had found online or in pictures. I just kind of free-handed a darker blue camouflage over the lighter blue base. Interestingly enough, in the end, it actually looks almost like a Russian fighter camouflage. So that pretty much takes care of all the camouflage painting. I can set this aside, let this dry for a little while. Now it's time to start painting out some of these details. 
So on this guy, I'm going to use these little details as places to add pops of color and little sheens and shines. So these are the 240 millimeter missiles that are on the top of his head here. And these can be fired underwater if need be, but more effective on land. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to give it a little bit of a metallic appearance here. And then just walking around this week, we had some Navy vessels docked here in town. And of course, the Coast Guard was there as well. And they're all trimmed out in this really nice bright orange color the Coast Guard ships are. So I thought that would add a nice touch of color onto this aquatic mecha suit. And one of the more interesting, I guess, consequences, of the, at least the way that I work, is even though I took all the parts apart, you know, all the pieces apart in order to paint them separately as suggested, when it came down to painting the camouflage, well, I really needed to put everything back together so the camouflage pattern made sense. And so, consequently, there was a lot of overspray on these parts that should have been pre-painted on when they were separate. So I ended up coming back and having to do quite a bit of hand painting anyway. Really not a big deal. Actually, it was something that I was expecting to do in the first place. So, anyway, it's <laughs> just kind of a funny aside, I guess, you, if you will. Well, we're starting to get down to the final steps here, at least on the assembly and uh, painting and finishing here. So as you can see, he's all together now. So we've built him, we've taken him apart, we've painted him, we built him, we painted him, we took him apart a few times. Now we'll add some decals. A couple of different sheets that we'll be using here. One is from the Bandai kit. Another one is from Show Me What You Bought, a nice detail kit specific to this model itself. And then of course I've taken some decals from my stash box here. Now I'm not following any sort of a pattern or scheme here because I <laughs> frankly I don't know where these decals are supposed to go or his markings are supposed to supposed to be. So I'm just kind of following my imagination and as a final step I'll use some AK adapter just give that a little splash over the decals and let everything settle into place. And with this, this is going to draw us to the end of this episode. Yes, I, I threw you all a curveball. We're making a Zagok Gundam figure here. Yes, but it's all modeling, and I'm having a blast, and I'm really enjoying the fact that I'm in a buddy build with Cobra Pla, and I really do want to say thank you to Show Me What You Bought, who was supplied us with these kits to use on this buddy build. We do have a look at Cobra Pla and his paintwork. He's chosen quite a different scheme. It's actually a little bit more traditional in his appearance. It's going to be great, like I said, to see how our two projects come together in the end. If you like this channel and you like this project, please hit that like and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page, and the link for that is in the description below. So until the next time, well, we'll get on to weathering, of course. And we'll, we've got a base to do. We've got all sorts of things to do here. So until the next time, everybody, take care and happy modeling.